Aloha and welcome to today's live stream. My name is Master Paul and it is my greatest honor to be a worldwide representative of Dr. and Master Ji Gong Sha. Today is Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. It is November 25, 2016. I uh, hope that you have all had a wonderful day, that you have recovered from the Thanksgiving holiday, for those of you in America anyway, the other countries. It was probably a blip on the radar. But for in America, we tend to uh, overindulge ourselves with a lot of eating. And then, of course, we uh, go out the next day and overindulge with shopping. So for those that come in today, I know you're not out shopping. Either that or you've already accomplished it. And uh, you're also the ones that are the most in recognition of the teaching for today, which will be on connecting our heart to the divine's heart to help release our stress. We all have a divine connection. Some of us have connected and stayed connected to that more than others. Very often, some of the, some of the times those connections um, diminish, especially when we have stress enter our life. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Many of you might not know that Dr. and Master Shah, who has written over 20 books, 10 of them which are New York Times bestsellers, four of which have reached number one on the New York Times bestsellers list. But an early book that was written was called Living Divine Relationships. And I'll be referring to some pages from uh, this extraordinary book. It was actually one of the first that I'd ever read. And it was such enlightened material, I was truly um, taken back by the level of wisdom in this uh, beautiful little book, just a small book, maybe uh, 100 pages maybe or less, and, uh, but just loaded with, with gems of wisdom. So that's one of the things that we can look forward to today uh, as we move forward with today's most important event. Also, I will be offering additional teaching guidance and blessings. Um, flow from the divine regarding the nature of our relationship with the divine and how when we are not in alignment with connecting to the divine how it can impact us uh, in so many different ways around our level of stress in our life <clears throat> so I want to stop and acknowledge everybody that's jumped in here welcome Stephanie Cannon welcome Linda good to see you as well Heidi thank you for joining us Thomas good to see you Welcome, Ilona, coming in from the UK at late at night. Shari has joined us. Welcome, Shari. And Petra, coming in from Europe. I love the night owls. Uh, all, of, all of us have to find time in our day for something like this. And it's my intention to bring as much value to you as possible because I know how valuable an hour of time is to me. Uh, I want to make sure that however much time I give to you is fully of value to you. So thank you for taking the time to be with me. Welcome Tatiana, welcome Chelsea, great to see all of you, welcome Esther, good to see you Richard Amodio coming in from Bangkok, Thailand, uh, I believe it's probably early in the morning, I think maybe 5 or 6 a.m. if I remember correctly, my wife's from Thailand, Richard might have mentioned that to you, um, but I think she usually calls um, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon sometimes, I think that's morning time over there, anyway, welcome Crystal, welcome Barca, great to see all of you. So uh, please, everybody, hit the share button. Let other people know about this live stream as it starts. Maybe some people will come in and be able to catch the bulk of this wisdom, teaching, and blessings around staying aligned to the divine that we can release our stress. So let us connect. Uh, after you hit that share button, let us connect heart to heart and soul to soul by placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. And this is when we drop the left hand in front of the heart center, the right hand remains pointed uh, towards heaven. And as we do this, it is about connecting to the divine. That is the topic of today, so let us truly fully connect. And welcome Cheryl, 4 p.m. where you're at. Welcome Patrice, welcome Carrie Lynn. Thank you so much for joining, welcome Nicole. So let us connect. Dear beloved divine, dear the Tao and the source, original creator, dear Master Shah, we love you, we honor you, respect you, Deeply, deeply appreciate your presence in our lives. We know that we are far from you in our understanding, but that you are always in our heart, that you are always near to us. And we ask that today that you 
come to sit in our heart centers and offer extra special guidance, wisdom, and blessings that we can stay more aligned, fully realigned to our divine oneness and divine connection. We ask that you assist Master Paul by releasing whatever guidance, wisdom, and insights are most important for each of those on the line to hear. We ask that you offer the greatest and highest blessings that we can release the stress that we have held on to all of our life, the stress that we have accepted as natural or normal or as unchangeable and give us the, the guidance, wisdom, and knowingness that it is much easier to transform that. Help us to release our suffering to you, beloved divine, and allow us to return to your heart in the highest and best way possible. We ask the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony to please turn on and to guide all of us in this blessing, in our alignment. We ask all souls in all universes to please turn on their Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony and to join us as we offer this chanting practice today. So let us chant love, peace, and harmony to connect all souls, heart to heart, soul to soul. For those that are not familiar with it, please close your eyes, receive. For those that are, please join in to serve. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula li lula, lula li lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling, wo ai tren ren le, wang li rong er mu shi xiang, xiang ai ping an er xie. Song I ping on her shade. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling. Wo ai tren ren le. Wang li hing rong her mu shi sheng. Shuang ai ping an er xie. Xiong ai ping an er xie. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We say thank you three times. The first thank you is to the divine. Second thank you is to all the holy beings. And at this time we call forth all beings of light, masters, ascendant, masters, lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, buddhas, bodhisattvas, namo amitofu, uh, Lord Buddha, uh, lingui sheng shi kuan yin, 87 buddhas, beloved master Jesus, beloved mother Mary, all healing angels, archangels, masters, ascendant, masters, we invite in our heavens teams, our ancestors. We ask them to please join us today as we practice. Mahalo. Welcome CJ, welcome Nicole, welcome Tina He, welcome Tamia, welcome Zilki, welcome Nancy Eisenbeis, uh, welcome Michelle uh, and Ali. Thank you all very much for your presence. Thank you for your sharing. Today is going to be extraordinary. I could feel the power of this practice before even doing it. There is a significant, there is significant healing 
that can occur when we stay connected to the divine. So I'm going to start by offering a flow on the way we subtly and unknowingly disconnect from the divine. I'm going to ask the divine to offer this guidance for us so that we have a, um, a starting point by which we bring about this healing blessing wisdom and service today. And so I will definitely be offering some blessings as well to help transform some of the stress related to this. And a big part of this is a recognition of forgiveness. Um, you know, one time when I was at a Master Shah retreat, Master Shah uh, was asked if, if we could receive a blessing for forgiveness with the divine. And um, we, were, we were very blessed that at that particular retreat we got a yes. We have not seen it since. The opportunity has, has not come around since. And it was like, well, forgiveness from the divine? Why would we need forgiveness from the divine? Well, how many times have you raised your fist in fury at God because of something you experienced in your life but did not understand? You know, did God create any of the suffering in our life? No, of course not. And yet, that's the Father. So that's the one we feel safest with. He's never come back to us and said, you should not raise your fist to me. He's never come back to us and say, uh, you know, that's not the right thing to do. But it does create, of course, a, a negative karma. And it brings us out of alignment with the divine. So a lot of what we're doing today is realigning ourselves in a very big way. And assisting ourselves so that when and if stressful situations come, we can work through them in a much better way. So I'm going to start with the flow. And welcome, Cheryl Spencer. Thank you all for joining. If I haven't mentioned anybody's name, uh, double blessings to you. I see Facebook a little bit. I want to make it catch up. Okay. Dear beloved divine, we all are deeply honored and grateful for your presence in our life, for your creation of all of life, for the creation of beloved Mother Earth, we are honored and grateful for your creation of everything that we have. We wish to connect with you at this time and ask for you to offer a flow. Please borrow Master Paul's mouth and allow him to speak your words of wisdom to assist all of those watching here today, all of those who will watch us in the future, with a much deeper understanding of the nature of what happens when we are disassociated with you, our beloved Creator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is your beloved divine. Master Paul is but one of my universal servants. What is a universal servant? It is someone who serves another selflessly. Truly, the only thing that I would ever wish for all of my creation is to operate with this as the only breath from the moment of awakening to the moment of return to my heart. It is when this misalignment from this original thought occurs that all suffering begins. Do you think that 100 or 1,000 years ago the humans of those times suffered the stresses that you have today? The stress of a child screaming and keeping you from watching your TV show? The stresses of the boss threatening to lower your pay or dock you. 
There are many stresses today that are very unique and different from those of a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, and many lifetimes ago. However, there is one unique connection to every single being when they experience stress, and that is a disconnection from all that they are originating from. God is the name you call me, Allah, others. Everyone has a name for the soul that I am. My service to you, each of you, is and has always been fully and completely unconditional. Ask and you shall receive is true. The only thing that has separated this from happening in any given moment is the choices that you have made, both consciously and unconsciously. For example, the choice of being separate from me in many cases is unconscious. How does it come about? This question was posed and now I shall answer. Separation from me occurs from the moment you awake. Is your thirst thoughts of gratitude for your das domicile? Was your first thoughts of gratitude for the breath that you took, for the opportunity to bring light and life to those that you connect with on that day? Or was your first thought of, oh my God, I'm late. Oh, how am I going to do this? I have so much to do today. Perception is very close to actuality. When you recognize that I am that which you focus on, that what you want is what I shall deliver to you. And you look at how you start your day. You get more of what you focus upon. So I give you this as a simple example of how you find yourself disconnected from me. We all have, should I say you all have, patterns. You are comfortable with the expectations that this and that will happen at certain times. And when it does not, when you have an expectation that your child will get an A, when you have an expectation that someone that you work with will accomplish a certain task in a certain time frame and they do not, when your expectations are not met, then you have irritation. Some of you. This is another example of disalignment with me. I have no expectations of you. It is the way you bring yourself to each moment that is the great medium through which you can maintain alignment with me. When anything happens, to see it through my eyes would be to see it with perfection. I might not understand why this event, experience, occurred in this moment. But I trust that it is for a reason and that it will all work out. That one statement in every single thing that happens, supposedly happens to you or around you, can change your entire life. That one statement of, I don't understand, I had a perception it would happen like this, but it must be happening for a reason. It's all in the divine timing will allow you to allow the divine to work 
it's magic. Because everything does happen for a reason. And it is in the attachment, it is in the expectations, it is in the lack of gratitude and the lack of allowing that suffering and stress occurs. So my challenge to each of you, my beloved ones, is to awaken in each moment and to catch yourself from the automatic responses in all of the areas that life brings you stress and to move into allowance and to move into trusting that it will all work out. Because regardless of the label of good or bad, the working out of whatever came to you will release your stress and will release any karmic implications that might have brought it to you hundredfold faster as well as disallowing negative manifestations moving forward. I have said to you, what you think is what I will give. And if you stay in a stress place, you will receive more of that. If you apply the one sentence secret I just gave you, you will receive more of that. This is what I wish to share with you at this time regarding the nature of how you sometimes stay out of alignment with me, my heart, and my service to you as your unconditional universal servant. This is your beloved divine. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, divine, thou source, master, Shah. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that beautiful message. How? Okay. So, um, if that touched any of your hearts, if it made sense, make a comment. It made sense to me. Uh, I have, this is not the first time I've heard these kinds of information. I've definitely read similar things in different books. Heck, they might have mentioned it on the movie The Secret. I don't know. Um, but I guess one of the points is if it's repeated, there must be some wisdom in it. And um, oftentimes, um, the simplest way, the easiest way is the most simplest way. Uh, the, the Chinese way of saying that is Da Dao Jir Jin. The big way is extremely simple. Da Dao Jir Jin. And sometimes, the extremely simple way is simply to be present to each moment with that very gentle, loving space that God has given us the opportunity to emulate. So, let's hope that brings us some value. <coughs> so, uh, the box was closed, was solid. You were able to hear everything. I see it hiccuping every once in a while. Welcome, Diane Wooten. Welcome, Cheryl Spencer. Welcome, Shaker. Welcome, Jean. Welcome, Kristen. Welcome, uh, everybody else that I might not have mentioned. So let us do a practice together and uh, some blessings, and then I will uh, read a little bit from Master Shah's book, Living Divine Relationships. Um, I would highly recommend this book to anybody. It is truly one of the uh, best books that Master Shah has written and actually little known. Most people don't know that he has this book called Living Divine Relationships. It's an extraordinary book. Great, great, great wisdom. So let me uh, get some guidance on the practice. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to use the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony to bring love, peace and harmony to ourselves to help release our stress. We're going to ask it to realign us to the divine, to help us reset our um, reactions, our um, a way of being. Okay, So everybody, please place your hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. And close your eyes and you're going to repeat this invocation. We're going to do a quick forgiveness as well. <clears throat> Dear beloved divine, repeat after me. 
I truly love you. I truly am so grateful to understand this wisdom deeper about how to align to your heart and soul and what I have been doing that has kept me out of alignment. I ask for your blessings through this practice of this chanting of love, peace and harmony to bless me to open my heart and soul to yours, to realign my automatic responses, to realign my expectations, assumptions, judgments, and more, wherever they pop up. Please bless me to hold on to your one sentence secret of seeing each and every experience as something that is in perfect alignment with you and that even though it might not look like the best condition at that moment that it is serving a divine purpose and allowing the highest and best to occur please bless me to bring this perception this mindset attitude belief to every event please bless me to awaken with gratitude on my mind in my heart and in my every breath so that through the remainder of my life I can be as much in alignment with you as possible thank you thank you thank you continue to repeat Dear beloved divine, dear all souls, please forgive me. Please forgive me for not seeing each and every event as perfect and in alignment with the divine's plan. Please forgive me for blaming you, judging you, criticizing you, for yelling, screaming, having fits of anger. Please forgive me for outbursts and reactions because what I was experiencing was not what I was expecting. I will do better. Dear God, please forgive me for any lifetime that I have held you in contempt or blamed you for any action that I did not understand, any experience that was painful. I deeply wish to align my heart and soul to yours and I am honored for this opportunity to receive your blessings during this practice. Finally, we ask the soul of love, peace and harmony to please bless this request for alignment of our heart and soul to that of the divine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now as we chant love, peace and harmony, I want you to visualize that the divine God comes to be in your heart center. You are sitting at the divine's feet, wrapped in his love, receiving the blessings. And you are singing to God, love, peace and harmony. Let us begin. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula. Wo 
I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> I ask my love, peace, harmony, Jindan to turn on. Dear Mother Earth, could you please turn on your love, peace, harmony, Jindan? We ask both these Jindans to radiate to everybody watching this video. Offer blessings as appropriate for the requests already made. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Oh, I was in Erling. Oh, I turn and lay. Wang Li Hirong, her mushu shung. Song I ping on a say. Song I ping on a say. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Continue to chant the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony as I offer you third eye images of what is happening at this time. There is a temple in each of your hearts. In this temple is the Divine. This temple has been in each of your heart centers since the moment you were conceived. In that moment, original soul of your Creator came to your heart. This original soul is what is meant by God is always with you. It is in this soul that your soul sits. You are sitting in front of the Divine in this incredible, bright, golden temple, every column, every spire, every archway is bright gold. There is a massive, massive lotus flower in which the divine sits and you are receiving tremendous blessings from your divine creator. There is light coming not only from the Divine's heart to your heart but from every direction. The creation that is of the Divine. All of the stars and the planets, the universes, the galaxies and more are shining their light towards you. They are embellishing your healing. Your heart center is literally outside of your body in its growth. It has exceeded the physical limits of your body as the light continues to pour into it. There is a great deal of grief and sadness that your soul is exuding as it lies flat on the floor weeping for all of the lifetimes that it has ever created separation from the divine. It is weeping in joy and in the deepest gratitude 
for this most incredible love that is fully present. It is weeping uncontrollably because it knows, it remembers the Divine's pure and unconditional love. Your soul wishes so much for you to remember what has been shared with you today. For it knows that it is at your mercy, your choices, and your actions that it must experience this in all future lifetimes. And I will offer a collective message at this time. This is one soul speaking for all souls. I am the representative of each of your body soul. Each of us, seven billion on this planet, have come here many hundreds, some thousands of times. We have had great, great joys, witnessed birth and death. We have experienced the horrors of war and the incredible ecstasy of the deepest love. This is all in perfect uh, alignment and unison that our Creator wanted. But there are some choices that we as souls truly wish that you, as the personalities, our representatives on earth, could choose differently or better. For we, the soul, desire to return as quickly as possible to the heart of our beloved God. And we need your assistance to accomplish this. We need you to pay attention to the wisdom, to be the practice, to walk the talk, so to speak. We are ever present in your consciousness, all of us are speaking, communicating, touching you in your heart, in your thoughts, in every moment, and all that keeps us from you in the understanding is the old, the mindsets, attitudes, and more. Please do your part to clear whatever you can and to make our collective journey back to the Creator exponentially faster and filled with the highest of joys. You are deeply loved by each and every one of the original soul of your body. Please connect to us more. This is the representative of your individual body souls. Ha. Ha, ha, thank you, thank you, thank you. A few more rounds of love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Why, washing darling? Why, turn and lay? Only room, her musher shung. Song I ping on a say. Song I ping on a say. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. 
let us bow our head to our beloved Creator for all of the wisdom and the blessings that we have received here today. Countless bow downs, countless bow downs, countless, countless, countless bow downs. It is the divine that brought the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony through Master Shah to humanity. And therefore, it is a great song to stay connected to the divine. So please share what your experiences were during this practice. Uh, I have been sweating profusely ever since the practice started. No problem before, now I'm just drenched. And so please share what your experience was. Did you have any insights, any visions, third eye visions? <clears throat> Did you experience any warmth, emotions? Did you have um, any cathartic releases? Uh, while you are doing that, I am going to read from you from Master Shah's book, Living Divine Relationships. So, uh, this is uh, starting on page 17 for those of you that are interested. It says, God is first. To be living in divine relationships with God is the absolute top. The ultimate, the highest connection that you can realize in this lifetime. It is the top and also the only true relationship possible when your soul seeks total enlightenment it is also the most cherished relationship through all cultures and all time this ultimate relationship with the divine is a deep commitment you must place yourself second you must remove ego and enter into a quality of service to others a service to all souls in the universe for some, this means allowing all souls in the entire universe, both light side and dark side, to realize their own enlightenment, to enter the heavenly realms and even beyond all realms before it is your turn. This means to serve others and they reach there first before you get a chance. You become the shepherd guiding God's flock. Because this book is written to help you enter into living into divine relationships with God, all those who are in your life, I will not debate the accuracy of the different spiritual religious available to us on the planet at this time. Holy seekers, yogis, priests, and even Sunday worshippers have many names for God. Let us not debate which is the best. This is not my purpose here. God is the presence that each of us knows deeply in our hearts. Songs, poems, books, symphonies, libraries, institutions, churches, and many other forms of worship that gather around this truth in our hearts to express its own path. What they have all in common is the knowingness that God exists. <clears throat> Even those who say God does not exist are still speaking in the antithesis to something they wish to deny. God is also known as emptiness, Adonai, Allah, the Great Spirit, the Tao, Shiva, Oneness, Father, Universal Light, Divine Presence, the Creator, and others. All cultures have their name for God. All cultures have an image of God that is unique to their geography, their race, and time and history. Many people recognize the use of light and love as they help others to heal. Bishops, priests, rabbis, shamans, and others preach the name of God throughout many cultures and the words light and love. Light carries God's presence. Light announces the arrival of God. The many colors of light, the golden light, the brilliant white light, the rays of light, even the light that has no color, the rainbow light and the blue light bring us close to God. We feel God in these qualities of light and light is also the name for God. The presence of divine love is also a manifestation of God's heart. The quality of awe and love that we feel when holding a newborn infant is our soul recognizing the direct journey that this young being has just made from the heart of God to the present moment. We know this deeper in our words than our words can describe because our soul understands the incredibleness of it. <clears throat> we know the feeling, the purity of the love from God 
as the infant arrives in this physical world. A baby is an expression of the divine love of God. Divine love can come to us in moments of peace and comfort as we look at the light of dawn. Divine love can come to us in a thought. This connection As your heart opens and your mind lets go of its logical thinking, allow the name of God to have many letters and sounds as it travels through the universe. It is true that a sound or word cannot totally be expressed of who God is. So the sound or word is only a small aspect of God. What this sound or word does do is it points in the many directions where we find aspects of God manifesting in our physical world. <clears throat> in the soul world, as your spiritual channels open, you can travel more fully and completely into the divine presence of God. And in this way, you are closer to God than in the physical world. Yet while the sound or word is only pointing in the many directions where we find God, there are also something deeper. The sound or word of God, the many names of God that I have used thus far, each carry a soul. Sounds and words carry a soul. They are each a soul. They carry a subdivided soul of God, and in this way they are living. As a living, subdivided soul of God, when you call out their name, they directly carry your message to God. This is a huge secret and a deep spiritual wisdom. When you say the name God, that is the name you personally use in keeping with your culture or spiritual tradition. You are speaking to God directly. So far, the impact of these teachings, I'm still reading, to transform you you must now let go of the conscious habit of perceiving the divine as different from your life. I'm going to repeat that. You must now let go of the unconscious habit of perceiving the divine as different from your life. Yet know that the divine is quite different from the physical life that you may be living right now. So you can transform your life, your relationship, your body, your emotions, your thinking, and your very relationship with yourself, and therefore everything in your life, by making these changes. First, in your heart, bring together as one the holy and the mundane. This means to bring together the spiritual world and the physical world as one. The divine lives in us, out us, throughout us, in every thought, word, breath always present. We must recognize that now. Second, recognize the meaning of divine. It refers to the heavens, to the celestial. Yet these very words have been written by people who attempt to separate heaven and earth. Know that the time is now in the soul light era to heal these separations while still understanding their differences. Third, live each day, each relationship, in the manner that you know to be of your highest attribute, the very attributes and qualities that you know belong to the saints. Place yourself in the condition of being a saint on this earth and live in that way. This was written approximately 15 years ago. Today, Master Shah is teaching the Ten Das. Live the greatest love, the greatest light, the greatest forgiveness, the greatest compassion. Be an emissary of the greatest harmony, the greatest humility, the greatest service, the greatest flourishing, and the greatest enlightenment. That's what he is saying here. Fourth, to be able to truly enter the divine, the distinction that makes it different, yet not separate from the physical world. To enter it, you must have the first foundation of placing yourself in the condition of being a saint. How do you do that? You practice the ten das in your thoughts and your words and your actions. If you just like, uh, I keep reading, it is just like you cannot see over the top of any mountain until you first climb the mountain. 
then the view is entirely different. So most of humanity is still thinking and living itself as being at the bottom of the mountain or being separate from the divine. When in fact, simply by practicing the ten das in every step of our life, in our thoughts, words, and actions, we are in fact climbing the mountain and we can see clearly that we have always been one with the divine. <clears throat> Fifth, move through the doorway of the divine and fully enter this extraordinary spiritual realm. Divine means celestial, celestial of the heavens, the souls of the saints, the highest spirit masters, the angels, the protectors of both the light and the dark live in the heavenly realms. The purest of pure and the darkest of dark live together. They each have a job to do, a task that may take them thousands of years to complete. Then they too may be sent back to earth to complete some lessons or tasks that they are given. While they live in the heavenly realms, they may also enter into you by subdividing their souls. Sixth, to truly transform yourself to become a more divine being, it is necessary that you see and understand more of the celestial realms and the lives and the duties of the saints and the teachers in these realms. Why? Because with this understanding of the divine, you become the divine. This is the purpose of this lifetime. To do this level of transformation anywhere, doesn't matter if there's darkness, cloudiness, unbalanced emotions, negative karma, ignorance, attachments, or grasping, any ego at all, all of these needs to be cleansed and purified, then you are truly the vessel of pure light, pristine and clear, able to receive the messages and teachings and the duties that the divine asks of you. And in final sentence, in this manner, you too, in this single lifetime, can transform yourself into living a divine relationship with God. So this, these sentences come between uh, pages 17 and 23 of Living a Divine Relationship. This is truly a great book that Dr. Master Shah put out many, many years ago. And it is just full of these deep, beautiful gems. So... I see that there are some additional people joined. I see that the practice kept everybody in the hunden and that they really wanted to receive these words that were written by Dr. Master Shah because there was very few comments afterwards, which I should not have asked you to comment and then at the same time listen. So my mistake there. Um, I truly hope that today's uh, wisdom and guidance has served you. I want to re-extend an awareness that there is uh, three blessings that have been offered this week that can assist you with transforming blockages related to stress. The first one will also apply to today. And it is a crown chakra blessing to align your perspective to the divine's perspective on abundance and prosperity. Um, this is a tremendous way to align your heart to the divine's heart. I also offer a crown chakra blessing for... Uh, releasing workplace stresses and that would be specific to you we would chat I would do flow and we'd define exactly the name of that crown chakra blessing specific to you the third one would be for specific relationships as this is an area of stress in our life almost all of us have one or two people that we simply just can't seem to get over those stressors with those blockages and a crown chakra blessing sometimes is the right one for this. Sometimes it requires a blessing for the relationship itself or both the people in the relationship. So that would also be on a divine guidance basis. The crown chakra blessings are always available. They're an honor fee of 100. Uh, many people have already taken advantage of the ones for uh, work-related stress. And uh, several have taken advantage of the ones for aligning the... the uh, uh, prosperity to the divine thinking. Now that one does have a higher honor fee because it is, uh, it's extraordinary. I talked a lot about it last week, but it's, it's a, a 200 on the honor fee for that crown chakra blessing. But it's one of those where out of all the blessings I've ever received, two of them stuck out the most and that was one of them because it made such a profound perspective shift for me. I no longer stress about financial anything. It's just, I just, I don't worry about it anymore. I, I, it allowed me to fall into alignment and trust with the divine and it's always worked out much better that way. So for anyone that can see the value of that, it does have a little higher honor fee, but highly recommend it. 
Um, a beloved Universal Servant, Kristen, has put my, um, my link for my website uh, uh, right in the flow of all of the chat. So if that's of interest to you, you can, of course, Facebook message me. You can email me. You can go to my webpage. There's contact through there. Of course, I have videos going into further details on the healings and how they work. And this is a great opportunity also to share with others. As we're moving towards Christmas, I want to give you the thought of a gift that keeps on giving. You can offer blessings to anybody that you care about. It can be soul operations. It can be divine healing hands. It can be um, crown chakra blessings or if they have significant health issues, you can honor for a healing and transmission system, which, you know, if they're in pain and longstanding pain, they need that. If they have major health issues, that's what they need. Um, it's, it's truly a miraculous gift. And... Um, I would recommend that. Also, final calling, there is an ongoing uh, twice a month blessing in which I uh, use several high level treasures to offer extended blessings twice a month. There are 20 minute blessings uh, specific to your request and it's an honor fee of only $30. It's set up on an automatic, so $30 every month and you get two uh, blessings for your request and it can be for literally anything specific to you your finances finding a better job uh, any health condition any emotional blockage any mental blockage and when you consistently get a healing for that same thing or something new each time you start to uh, clear many many of the blockages in your life I made it such a low honor fee because I wanted it to be something that you could do also for a loved one a child or a pet so that's always available you can find that on my website um, and again, uh, Kristen's on top of it. She put that uh, in a link just below all the chats here. But it's also listed at the bottom of every one of my pages on the website. So feel free to contact me uh, if you have any questions. I love you all. I'll be back on Monday. And we'll, we'll uh, get into a new series at that time. I'll be working on it this weekend. So we'll see you then. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.